but anyway, uh, I took the examination, and that's where things changed, because where the other kids that uh, took the examination and were going in as cadets, they could be sent anywhere in the country. Uh, I specifically was directed to the training base, which was the only one to train black pilots, was uh, Tuskegee, Alabama. And uh, when I got on the train, I remember, in uh, Pennsylvania Station in New York uh, to go down to the uh, base in Alabama, I remember the train stopping in Washington, D.C., and the conductor uh, asking me to go up to the very front car, and it was uh, called the Jim Crow car, which I had never witnessed before. But uh, at Washington, D.C., down to Alabama was my first real experience of institutional uh, uh, segregation and uh, uh, that was uh, how I trained with a uh, all black unit uh, uh, the entire time that uh, I was training as a cadet, uh, except uh, and in the and in the service. Hmm. Uh, certainly, the exceptions were, and uh, uh, the instructors that uh, instructed me were uh, white and. Uh, uh, overseas is I was assigned to the 332nd fighter group, which uh, was designated as a uh, bomber escort group, uh, as were a number of other uh, fighter groups that were uh, over there at the time. But anyway, it was rather ironic that uh, here we are, uh, all black fighter pilots, and we're sitting up above uh, B-24 and B-17 bombers, uh, offering them protection from enemy aircraft. And, you know, they're all white and we're all black, but uh, uh, that did not form any type of uh, obstacle at the time for getting the job done. Is uh, We, as African-American pilots, we did our job as a... Uh, fighter pilots, uh, r regardless of doing it as a, uh, uh, as a unit or uh, uh, as an all-black or segregated unit. And uh, the uh, pilots in the uh, air crew members, in the bombers uh, that we protected, they were, you know, the same way as that uh, we had a job to accomplish and uh, that's that's what we did. Would you say that by serving together and trying to uh, accomplish this common goal, it put down and helped bridge the divisions that existed in America in this time? Would you say it was like that? Not quite, because when I got out of the service uh, after the uh, end of the uh, World War II, a little bit after that, exactly 1950 to be exact, uh, I found the same discrimination uh, throughout the South and uh, uh, in the North where uh, I was from, even though it was uh, a, a limited type of uh, uh, discrimination. But I, I did not find any change had really taken place. And the experiences that we had and the experiences that the uh, white bomber crew members and uh, the African-American fighters had with their uh, uh, flying uh, in teams sort of together there, uh, they may have had a uh, slight impact on what transpired later on, but uh, uh, I don't think the impact at the time was that great. And the reason I say I, I went and I applied with the airlines in a couple of cases uh, to uh, become a pilot with the airlines, and I was uh, rejected, uh, not because of my experience, but because of my color at the time. Right, because in any other situation, from what I understand, the ranks of commercial pilots were filled with aviation veterans from World War II. That's true. That's true. Hey, everyone. Scott here. We're going to take a very short break for a word from our sponsors. Thank you. 
One more question before we get into your combat missions, which I'm very curious about. In terms of these challenges, were you aware of these during your training before the 332nd in flight school that with other African-American cadets, were you aware of any additional challenges you had in training or do you think it was similar to what any pilot would experience in training? Yeah, I don't think I uh, uh, suffered, you know, really any uh, impediments, uh, you know, to the uh, training there as a result of my color, except, except as I say, that uh, I trained as uh, in a segregated unit at the time there. Uh, although the uh, instructors in basic and advanced training were all white, is uh, I had no difficulty as far as that's concerned. I think uh, uh, by and large, uh, they did a fine job because, uh, you know, I was able to go ahead and uh, uh, master uh, the intricacies of the uh, aircraft and the uh, uh, flight training and that type of thing. So they, they must have did a good job in uh, training me uh, at the time. Uh, as I said, uh, the, uh, the the only difference between, and I would say that the principal difference between the uh, flight training uh, that we did uh, at the uh, Tuskegee Army Air Base and the flight training that was done at other fields like Randolph Field and places like that was that we trained as a uh, as a segregated unit. Well, let's get into your missions. And my audience loves military history, especially of World War II. This will be something I think they'll really be interested in. Could you tell me about your first mission? You were deployed in Italy at this time. What did your mission involve and how did it go? Okay, we were flying long-range strategic uh, bomber missions. Uh, Our job was uh, uh, to offer protection to any number of the... uh, B-17 and B-24 bomber squadrons flying long-term missions into central Germany and uh, the parts of Eastern Europe. Uh, I guess I remember mostly going up into areas like uh, Austria and into Germany itself and that type of thing. And the missions being quite quite lengthy, uh, I guess we flew... Well, the longest mission I can remember being on escorting the bombers there was six and a half hours. And that's kind of rough sitting in a fighter plane, which is a very cramped space that you have, and there's no room to move around or anything like that, just save for uh, operating the controls, that's all. But you can't get up and walk around and uh, relieve yourself very easily uh, from the tension of the muscles and that type of thing. So... It was uh, stressful flying those uh, long-range missions like that. The uh, first mission, or the first few missions that I flew, uh, it uh, was a revelation. It was something entirely new to me because uh, once I checked out in the uh, P-51, I think I had an hour or two before I uh, flew on my first mission, but I was told to... uh, fly close in with my uh, flight leader at the time there, and uh, I was flying, I guess, what you call tail end Charlie. I was one of the new recruits, so I was sitting at the sort of end of the formation. And I I mention all that to say that uh, I had the most beautiful view or panorama of everything that was going on in front of me there, because uh, sitting in the back there, I could see the concentration trails from all of the bombers, each one of them with the four engines there, where you had the four contrails from each bomber, and we had as many as four or 500 bombers that uh, were being escorted, and then there were the contrails from the uh, single-engine fighters. There were the P-51s. And in order to maintain the same ground speed as the uh, uh, as the uh, bombers, we did S turns over the bombers there, and uh, it was really a, a ballet of uh, 
uh, the figures in the sky there. It was a beautiful sight to behold. And I, I was more fascinated, I think, by the, that ballet in the sky uh, than anything else. Of course, soon uh, into in many territory there, we would see these uh, uh, black bursts with uh, orange color in the middle of them. And uh, that was a flat that was being thrown up at us. But they were mostly after the uh, bombers there. We fighters were uh, uh, 500 to 1,500 feet above the bombers. So uh, usually the fleck wasn't up at our altitude there, but every once in a while they would come up at around our altitude and you would get the flak bursts very close and that type of thing. Uh, you would see the uh, flak hit the... Uh, or apparently hit the uh, bombers in uh, some instances there, and the bombers either catching fire or pieces of the aircraft being blown away and the plane going into a dive or a spin. Uh, ten men on those planes and each one of the bombers there. And, of course, when they go down, they're going down with uh, ten men there. Uh, we, again, with the uh, fighters, we, we just had the pilot. That's all, and... Uh, there's just the one person uh, in the B-51. Uh, the missions were varied. Uh, I, I did fly a couple with the uh, British, and uh, these were reconnaissance missions. Uh, they were sort of after missions, as once the bombers had bombed the targets there, uh, the mosquito bombers that the uh, British were flying would make a high-speed run uh, over the target with their cameras and uh, take pictures of the uh, bomb damage. And they would have a small escort group with them, about four fighters. And uh, I had a couple of those missions like that, uh, which uh, we would fly over the uh, bomb to target and uh, with the British and uh, protect them sort of and uh, uh, in case they're attacked while they're trying to take these uh, pictures. Uh, that continued until, uh, <coughs> pardon me, uh, my 43rd mission. I flew 43 missions uh, over Europe, and uh, the war uh, ended uh, somewhere after my uh, 43rd mission. <coughs> I had... Uh, a number of missions also that uh, we had what's known as once we uh, escorted the bombers, if we brought them safely back to a, uh, a uh, what we considered a safe position there, they might cause fighters to go on what's known as a fighter sweep uh, or target of opportunity. And in that case there, we might go down and strafe and shoot up uh, river barges or any moving traffic uh, that we could find, anything that would hamper the uh, 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 defense of the uh, uh, of the uh, access powers at the time there. The uh, only really skirmish I got into was on uh, April 1st of 1945, which happened to be April Fool's Day and also <laughs> happened to be Easter Sunday. And uh, that skirmish there uh, ended up with my uh, 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 claiming victory or uh, uh, being awarded uh, the Distinguished Flying Course for uh, uh, shooting down uh, three enemy aircraft at the time. Uh, there were uh, uh, a couple of our pilots who were shot down and killed uh, on that specific mission that we were on. And the mission itself was, as I mentioned before, we had been released to uh, uh, go after targets of opportunity. And we ran across these uh, uh, German aircraft, Focke-Wulf uh, 190s, and uh, actually, I, I, I shot down two of the aircraft, and uh, one of them uh, came near shooting me down. It was on my tail. I couldn't shake him, but uh, I had dived down uh, close to the deck there, and I was skirmishing through the trees and making some tight turns, and 
evidently this pilot over controlled and went into the ground and uh, was uh, 